Hi everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our fifth lesson on flight operations. We're going to be discussing weight and balance. You're probably looking at this picture and saying like, how cruel of you, you are so politically incorrect. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I, I apologize, but not really because it is a pretty funny picture. Okay, let's uh, begin with a few terms related to weight and balance. First off, the empty weight. The empty weight is the aircraft weight as weighed by an aircraft maintenance engineer. Uh, you will find the weight and balance documents uh, in your uh, document pouch or wherever the aircraft owner keeps those documents. You're required to have it on board. And uh, that empty weight gets amended every time uh, an AME might install or remove a piece of equipment. Let's say they take a radio out and they replace it with a different radio. The weight and balance gets amended. The gross weight is the maximum weight of the aircraft uh, that is certified to fly. And the datum is a reference point for weight and balance distances. So it's usually the firewall or the leading edge. So you have a reference datum in this case, it's the firewall. So all distances back are from the firewall. And it, it can be anything. It can be the spinner, it can be the leading edge, it can be the, the wing spar. It, it really doesn't matter uh, just as long as it's specified and everything's done with reference to one point. The arm is a distance an object is from the datum. Okay, so in, let's say these people here, we'll talk about it later a bit, but it might be like 20 inches. Okay, and then the moment, uh, just basic physics, the moment is the weight times the arm measured in inch pounds. So you are going to be required to locate the center of gravity for your aircraft. So the first thing you're going to do is find the basic empty weight. Now, in this case, you'll see the basic empty weight is right here, but that's not actually uh, the one you're going to use because that's just a sample. The one you're going to use is going to be found in the weight and balance document for your aircraft. So let's uh, work our way through a sample uh, weight and balance calculation. So we took a look at our airplane, let's just say, and the empty weight is 1125. The empty moment we'll call it 36.6. So it's actually 36,600 inch pounds, but we divide everything by a thousand, just it makes it easier to write. So let's just say we use 20 gallons of fuel. So 20 gallons of fuel multiplied by six. So it's 120. Okay, so we have 120. So we're gonna look, this is a Cessna one. So we are going to look at fuel. So standard tanks is this one right here at 120, so 120 is right there. I'm gonna move all the way over here, right there. So we'll call that 5.4. Now let's say the pilot and passengers, let's say we have a 200 pound guy or girl. So we're going to look here, pilot, passenger, so that's a solid line, 200 pounds. So 200, we go over here, down here. So we'll call that, 7.8. We have no baggage, so let's add these things up. So 11.25 plus 120 plus 200. So the weight, 14.45. And let's add up the moments, 36.6 plus 5.4 plus 7.8 is 49.8. Okay, so we know our moment is 49.8 and the weight is 1445. Sometimes other aircraft manufacturers uh, will, instead of having a graph like this, they'll just give you the arm and then you just have to multiply it yourself. And this graph, all that is, is the slope of the graph equals uh, the arm. So if you're into math and that sort of thing. But uh, so we have 49.8, we said, and 1445. So let's look at the next uh, graph in the uh, POH. We can figure out if we're in our weight and balance range just by looking at the one on the right. So we said 49.8, so it'll be like right here. Okay, we're gonna go all the way up. It'll be about right there. And then we said 14.45, it's right there. So we're bang in the weight and balance range. What we can also do, we can uh, figure out where the center of gravity is just by dividing the moment by the weight. Remember, weight, um, would be in inch pounds divided by pounds would leave you with inches, the unit. So 49.8 uh, divided by 1445. 
and then remember we multiply by a thousand because everything's uh, divided by a thousand. So we end up with 34.4. So here's another way we can look at this graph. 34.4 be like right here and 14.45 would be like right there. Okay, so yeah, we're well within this range right here. You might be wondering, you, you would think that the center of gravity limits would be a rectangle, right? Um, but they're not because they're, the center of gravity, it changes right here. When you're really far forward, you can't be like, normally 32 inches is okay. However, if you're like a gross weight, you can't be at 32 inches, it just doesn't work. So why is that? Why is this slope right here, right? It's kind of weird. The reason for that is the nose gear. Uh, nose gear structural limitation. If you uh, have too far uh, nose uh, or too far forward center of gravity and you're too heavy, you're gonna put too much stress on the nose gear. So that's why that's there. And you can actually figure it out. You can see the change of slope right here. Uh, so it's at just below 1200, 1300. Notice how this slope changes here, just, it barely changes, but it does. So remember the empty weight is from the aircraft weight and balance report completed by the AME. The aircraft is weighed on calibrated scales and the gross weight is specified in the pilot operating handbook. To adjust the load, if you need to move the center of gravity forward, you can move an object forward or you can decrease the weight of objects aft of the center of gravity. Uh, you can also increase the weight of something forward of the center of gravity. To move the center of gravity aft, you move the object back, decrease the weight of objects for the center of gravity, or increase the weight of the center of gravity. So we already saw this funny picture, the one on the left, the one on the right. These are bags of sand, 50 pounds. U.S. Airways Express, you're like, what in the world? These are used to balance out aircraft. And an aircraft I used to fly one time, the Canada Regional Jet, often if there was a lot of people in the aircraft, but they didn't carry a lot of bags, uh, the aircraft would be really nose heavy. So then what they have to do is they put these bags of sand in the uh, in the baggage compartment, which was behind the cabin, uh, to get the center of gravity to within its uh, limit. It's pretty simple, uh, tie down your cargo, make sure it is properly tied down with appropriate straps, with appropriate um, hooks, whatever is approved for aircraft. The last thing you want to do is have the, that cargo shift in flight. We saw this, saw this video at the beginning. Uh, it's worth looking at again. This happened on takeoff from Bagram Air Force Base or Air Base in Afghanistan. They took off, the load shifted to the back of the aircraft and they were unable to control the aircraft. So a tragic ending to this flight. Aircraft are uh, designed to operate either in the normal utility or aerobatic category. So normal, the maximum uh, G loading is 3.8 Gs. You, that's normal flight and stalls. The utility category is 4.4 Gs when you're allowed doing spins, spirals, wing overs, that sort of thing. And then aerobatic 6 Gs when you can do loops. Sometimes aircraft will be certified in two different categories and there'll be different uh, restrictions. So for example, the Cessna 172, uh, you can operate in normal or utility category, but you can only operate it in the utility category if the back seats are empty. So if you want to do spins and you want to be in the utility category, you can only have one other person on board.
So a quick review, remember the moment equals the arm times the weight. You add up your weights and your moments and you look at your chart to find out if you're in the center of gravity limits. And remember to tie down your cargo. Let's work our way through a sample test question. So calculate the center of gravity. The empty weight's 1,104 pounds. The empty moment, 36.9. We have 320 pounds of passengers and 20 US gallons of fuel. Looking at the graph here on the right, uh, 320 pounds of uh, passengers. So that's pretty heavy. It's gonna be like right here, 12.5. Fuel, 120 pounds. We'll assume standard tanks. It's like right here, so 5.5. We add them all up. We end up with a total moment of 54.9 inch pounds and a total weight of 1,544 pounds. We look at our center of gravity moment envelope and we are in range. We can also divide out 54,900 pounds by 1,544 pounds. And we come up with center of gravity location of 35.5 inches. Looking at this graph, 35.5 inches across from 1,544 pounds, and we're within the center of gravity limits. That concludes this lesson on weight and balance. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in our next lesson.